Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition, otherwise known as the second generation Note 10.1. So this is a 10.1 inch tablet with Samsung stylus technology built in. So we've seen this with the Galaxy Note 3, we also see this with the Galaxy Note 8.0. And of course, this is updated for the latest versions of Android, so Android 4.3, of course we have 4.4 coming any day now. Uh, this also has the latest version of TouchWiz, and in many ways it's just a blown a version of the Note 3 includes the same specs as well, including a uh, Exynos processor or a Snapdragon 800 processor. Now the version I have here is Wi-Fi only, so this is a 32 gig version. You can get this in 16 or 32 gig in Wi-Fi configurations. You can get a 64 gig version if you want LTE. Now there are three versions just like the Note uh, 3, so there's an SMP600, which is the Wi-Fi only version. There's also a 601 for 3G and a 605 for LTE. Now the 605 has a different processor. It has the Snapdragon 800 processor, which is the same 2.3 gigahertz processor in the LTE version of the Note 3. Now since this is the Wi-Fi version, both the Wi-Fi and 3G only version get the uh, 8 core or octa core, sometimes called the octa core. It's actually two uh, quad core processors, a 1.9 gigahertz processor and a 1.3 gigahertz processor. So this is a Cortex A15, this is a Cortex A9. Basically the lower power processor kind of picks up uh, the lower power processes to conserve battery life while the A15 kicks in when you need more demanding uh, performance. Now just like the Note 3, we get 3 gigs of RAM. We do have an 8 megapixel instead of 13 megapixel sensor. Uh, this is still an improvement over the 5 megapixel sensor from the last generation Note 10.1. This does not do 4K video in any configuration, but if you get the LTE version, LTE version with the Snapdragon 800 processor, uh, you can get uh, 1080p video at 60 frames per second. Uh, this one records at 30 frames per second. Now both cameras here, 8 megapixel and 2 megapixel front facing camera, record at 1080p at 30 frames per second so still an improvement here and of course you do get an LED flash and we do have GPS built in so no matter what whether you get the Wi-Fi or LTE version you do have a GPS antenna in here you also have an IR blaster for controlling your home theater equipment uh, this has become standard pretty much on all Samsung devices this year now just like before this is available in white or black and is very similar to the design of the Note 3 which is a departure for Samsung. So instead of having that glossy back panel like we had before, instead we have this faux stitching on the back with this leather grain texture. So in many ways I think black may suit this design better because black I think flatters this sort of uh, uh, faux leather finish a little bit better than the white plastic. So let's go ahead and crack this open. Now the packaging is pretty familiar, so we have that wood grain finish printed with soy ink, so it's more environmentally friendly, so not a lot different here. Let's go ahead and crack the seal and take a look. Pop this out, flip it over, I'm just going to pull this out. Alright, so let's just lift the tab to free our tablet. So we're going to set this aside and take a very close look at that in just a minute while we take a look at the contents. So inside we have our literature packet. So we have only that Galaxy has its rewards. So we have some perks if we go to the website. Uh, Galaxy Note 10.1 Quick Start Guide, again printed in that soy ink with that recyclable paper. We have our Galaxy Note 10.1, looks like use the following steps to check for new and exciting software enhancements. Uh, we have the Galaxy Note Accessory Guide, so you can buy covers, book covers, screen protectors, and another S Pen, I guess if you lose yours. And we also have the Health and Safety Warranty Guide in multiple languages. Now inside we'll find our micro USB charging cable, so unfortunately no USB 3.0 with this device like you get with the Note 3. And you have your uh, stylus tip removal kit, so you have some replacement tips as well as the tool for removing the uh, tip from the stylus. And we have our USB charging adapter, so we have one USB port, looks, a lot, uh, looks just like the one for the Note 3. Alright, so let's go ahead and get to our tablet first by peeling up the plastic on the front. And let's go to the back to peel off the plastic along the back. On the back you can see the plastic wrapping indicates some of the features here and you can peel this off. We also have a little protector here on the camera. Along the edges we'll find more plastic strips protecting the edge so let's go ahead and peel all of those off. Alright, so with the plastic off, we can take a close look at the design, and the first thing that jumps out to me is that it really resembles the Tab 3. It's not quite as rounded as the Tab 3, the Tab 3 kind of has more rounded edges, but they've redesigned it so that the bezel in landscape orientation is smaller. So this makes the tablet a little more comfortable to handle, especially because we have this widescreen aspect ratio. Now something like the iPad 
uh, has a wider portrait mode uh, and a narrower landscape mode. So you can see it's more of a 4x3 screen. This is more of a 16x9 or 16x10 screen. So it's a wider screen. Makes it a little more strange to handle uh, in portrait orientation. So this redesign of the bezel makes it a little more comfortable, a little more normal to use. We also have our off-screen buttons now. So we have a physical home button, our off-screen Android buttons. These used to be on-screen on the uh, previous edition of the Note. Now they've also removed the front firing speakers and positioned them toward the left hand and right hand side. So they kind of broadcast toward the side. Now this is using Dolby signal processing for improved audio performance. Uh, now if you look at the top you'll see our 2 megapixel front firing camera again capable of recording video at 1080p at 30 frames per second which is an improvement over the 1.9 which could only do 720p from last year. We also have our ambient light sensor and we have our Samsung branding. Now the cellular version of this, the LTE and 3G version, do have GSM voice uh, which allows you to use this as a phone. Now uh, that wouldn't, doesn't mean you get an earpiece here by any means, it just means that uh, you could use this as a phone using the built-in speakers and the uh, built-in microphones or you can use a headset. Now along the back you'll see we have this full leather finish with that stitching along the side again very much like the Note 3. So this is a new design trend with Samsung. On the back you also see our 8 megapixel autofocusing camera capable of recording video at 1080p at 30 frames per second. If you have the LTE version with a Snapdragon 800 processor, you could get 60 frames per second. So there is no 4K video with this camera. Again, the Note 3 has that capability, but it also has a different sensor. It has a 13 megapixel camera. Uh, we have an LED flash as well. Uh, we have our stylus built in as well. You can see back here, not as integrated as it used to be. kind of sticks out a little bit more. It's not as flush as the old design. So if you pull that out. There is your Samsung stylus, uh, and you can see it's the same design as the last, or as the Note 3. It's a different design than the uh, previous generation. It's uh, got a, p a button here that's now positioned a little higher than before. And you can see it also can be installed in either direction, so you don't have to line it up exactly to get it right. Now if you look at the top of that pen, you can see it's got that same ribbed pattern as the side of the device. So if you look at the side along the edge, again, just like the Note 3, you get that sort of pages of a book look so it kind of goes with that note theme you have your micro SD card slot which can accept 64 gig cards so you can expand storage that way as well along the bottom you'll see your micro USB charging port so unfortunately no USB 3.0 here uh, which is useful for data speeds and charging capacity so this would have been nice on the tab or on the uh, note 10.1 because of the large battery uh, the USB micro USB tends not to be a fast charge. We also have our microphone down here. Along the side, you'll see your speaker grill, along with your headphone jack along the left side. You will have your sleep wake button, power on button, as well as your volume rocker up here. You have your IR blaster. You can see the bump for the camera here. Now, if you look at the camera module, just a small detail here. You see it has a little chrome ring around it, which I think is kind of nice. You can see the same thing with the Note 3. Along the right hand side again you have your stylus as well as the right hand speaker. Now if you look along the back you'll see your capacity indicator which gives me an opportunity to show off the leather grain along the back which does feel much nicer to handle than the uh, slippery plastic. Now Apple is about to announce the iPad 5 and the thing that I noticed right away is that they seem to share similar dimensions. So the iPad 5 has shrunken down the bezels on the left hand and right hand side in portrait orientation while Samsung has done that in the landscape orientation. So the overall effect is a very similar footprint although a very different screen aspect ratio. So if you look at it side by side it's almost similar in uh, the width of the device and the height of the device is also very similar. So if you look at them side by side again very similar. Not quite as thin as the new iPad 5 but it's also pretty close so dimensionally they're actually pretty similar although the screens are different. Alright so let's go ahead and boot this up for the first time and take a look. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at our user interface starting with the lock screen. Now there is some lag I've noticed with unlocking this device so let's go ahead and lock this, press the home button again wakes it up. Uh, you have your lock screen widgets so you can load as many as you want here but of course there's only a few you can pick from so here you have calendar, your clock widget, Twitter, email, Gmail, Google Now, Google Plus, Music, New York Times and Yahoo Finance. If you just want to add any one of those just drop it in and you'll see on your lock screen you now you have several that you can cycle through. And you see these little indicators down here telling you where you are in that uh, carousel and what position you are. And if you want to get to the home 
takes you all the way to home, which is the clock widget. You also have these shortcuts here. A lot of this I've activated under settings. It's off by default, and I'll show you how to get to that. Uh, so here you have your browser, which you can quickly launch right from the lock screen. It takes you right to that. And of course, you can also modify what appears here as well under settings. Now, the home screens are pretty basic. You just have three of them here, and you can quickly cycle between them just by using that slider gesture, or you can tap on each one of them. In the lower right corner, you have your app drawer. Uh, so, so those are your apps which you can drag and drop to your home screen uh, and you have your widgets as well and you can cycle between them you can use that little slider here you can also pinch out to see all of them and scroll through them and of course you can go back to get back to where you were same with the apps so you can see there's only one page of apps right now these are the ones that come with the device none of them I've added myself uh, they've also organized some of them into folders. So we have Galaxy Plus, which are third-party apps, which Samsung is partnered with, including Dropbox, Evernote, Flipboard, and Sketchbook for Galaxy. We also have Google, so all of our Google apps are in that folder. And we have Samsung, so all of these are Samsung apps, most of which I've demonstrated. Now, a new one I haven't seen before is Video Editor, so it's an enhanced video editor for putting together some of your videos, some of the content you create here. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail there. You also have Action Memo, which I'll demonstrate, Calculator, Downloads, Group Play, which I've also demonstrated previously, so this device does work with Samsung Group Play. Basically, you can uh, share music, video, games, and documents uh, with other Samsung devices using that Group Play app. You also have Knox, which is a security feature which works best in an enterprise environment. We also have My Files, which has been really enhanced for the tablet setting. So here you can see everything broken down by the category of files, and you can quickly navigate them through this list view. So it works pretty nicely. Now we also have S Translator and the Story Album app, and many of these files you'll find have to be downloaded. They're not pre-installed. That saves some space, and of course it depends on whether you want them installed or not so they give you that option they don't automatically install it for you now we can add apps to the home screen just by dragging and dropping them and as you can see when I drag and drop them it gives me this little viewer down here to select which home screen I want to drop it in or add a new home screen so for example if I want to drop it right here there you go you can also create a folder just by tapping and holding it taking it up to create a folder you can name it so I'm just gonna do test and I can drag other items to it such as my calendar here there you go and you can expand it just like that and drag and drop the apps out of it now we have many familiar apps here including polaris office 5 which is an office suite that allows you to read uh, standard office documents such as microsoft office documents so this allows you to read and edit those type of files uh, we also have youtube installed by default we have the screensaver for the note series we have an alarm which has looks like it's been redesigned here so we have a nice new alarm and clock interface uh, we have business week which is a subscription based service but you do get a free subscription with your device you can go ahead and activate your subscription you have to put in your information which I'm really not interested in right now. Now, in addition to Business Week, we also have New York Times, but you do have to subscribe to this, but you do get a week preview. Now, we also have our notification shade. So down here, you can see all of your notifications, which are expandable, and you can act on some of them. Uh, you also have your quick toggles up here, which allow you to quickly access some settings and quickly turn off some features. So you can see some of the features they included include reading mode, which only works under certain apps, such as the Google Play Books app. Basically, it dials down the screen brightness and changes the screen tone, so it's more conducive to reading. You can also activate some of these features, like Bluetooth, and uh, you can see it's telling me some things I need to do. So let's go ahead and stop that for now. All right, so let's go back to our notification shade. And up here, you can see we have two views here. So if we go here, you can see all of your toggles. Uh, you can also edit your toggles by going to this edit icon up here. And some of the available icons include smart stay, smart pause, smart scroll, sync, and airplane mode. Uh, so you can basically drag them up here and replace one of the actions such as air view here. So I can exchange air view for airplane mode and vice versa. But you do have to be able to fill the entire screen or the entire row up here with icons. So you can't uh, reduce it down to just a few. You do have to keep it filled up. Uh, unfortunately, you can add more than this. Uh, so you have to exchange one over the other, which I think is unfortunate because you used to be able to see all of them and just scroll between them. Uh, this time they're all fixed. Uh, you also have your brightness controls up here, which you can slide quickly. And you can also set it to auto if you prefer. And you can see your notifications down here, which you can quickly clear. You can also quickly jump to your settings by going to the settings icon up here. And you can see we have this sort of tabbed viewer. And we're going to take a look at settings a bit later. Now on the lower left corner, we have Google. So this allows us to quickly access Google and features like Google Now. Uh, so for example, we can go up here and say, what's the weather like tomorrow in Detroit? Tomorrow's forecast for Detroit is 68 degrees and mostly cloudy. 
Now down here we have our backlit Android controls including menu which is contextual. We also have our home button which takes us to the home screen and if you're on the home screen then press the home button again. It takes you to My Magazine. Now My Magazine is powered by Flipboard and allows you to aggregate your content from Twitter, Facebook and Google and it all appears here in this sort of magazine viewer. So if you click on any one of these articles you can see we get this magazine sort of condensed look to it. So we have mostly text, we don't have an extraneous bit of information, just text, and you can swipe between pages like you would on the magazine. Uh, you can also get to some options up here. So for example, if we go back here, go to the full My Magazine viewer, go to this drop down, you can quickly access uh, features like uh, SNOPE, calendar, email, Google, the browser, as well as your app store. So this allows you to quickly access some features while you have that full screen experience. Now you can also access My Magazine by swiping up from the bottom of the home screen. So again, go to your home screen, you can see kind of rolls up there for you. Now if you're like me and prefer that your home button not activate the My Magazine feature, you can go to settings and you can unclick it by going to open using the home key and unselecting that. Now if we tap and hold the menu button, we get the new S Finder app, which basically searches the entire device for content. So for example, I can search for the term Android using voice or text input, Android. So it brings up my keyboard, and if I want to sort of get away from the keyboard, I can see all my, all my content here. So I can will it between past 30 days, past 7 days, yesterday, today, next 7 days. I can also select the content type, so whether it's a handwritten document, notes, communication such as text messages or uh, emails, help images, music, videos, and personal information. So here you can see I have basically everything selected. So I can see my calendar events, Chrome, bookmarks, my files, because I have an Android file name, settings, so I can see Android version under settings, and search the web, so I can go right to Google to search for that term. So it's kind of a nice app. Of course, this does replace Google now, which used to be sort of integrated into that search feature. Now if you tap and hold your home button, you do get to your recent apps. So you can see I have lots of recent apps open, so I can quickly access them just by jumping right to them, or I can swipe them out of the way to close them. I can also use this close all feature to get them all closed. You can also go to task manager to see what's going on in the background. So I can see my active applications and I can end them to close them. Download, I can see what I've downloaded. So I can see I have one I've downloaded. I can see my RAM manager, so I'm using quite a bit of RAM right now out of my three gigs available. And you can see how much storage I have left. So this is pretty much uh, what you get. This is how much uh, storage or how much uh, the Samsung software is taking up right now uh, before you install your own apps and take your own photos. Now we can also tap on Google to get to Google now. What's the weather like tomorrow in Rochester? Tomorrow's forecast for Rochester is 70 degrees and mostly cloudy. Now we can also get to S Voice by double tapping the home button. What's the weather like in Chicago? Here is the weather for Chicago, Illinois. It's 59 degrees with intermittent sunshine today. Now you can also interact with this by saying, Hi Galaxy. How tall is the Empire State Building? One thousand two hundred fifty feet city rank, first national rank, third world rank, twenty fourth. Well, if you want more information, you can click more. It takes you to the full Wolfram Alpha clip it here. Now we still have multi-window mode, which you can activate by tapping holding the back button. So you have this little tray here which hides itself when it's not in use. So you can see you get a little tab here which is always omnipresent. If you want to get rid of multi-window mode, you can just tap and hold the back button to get rid of it. That closes the feature out entirely. You can also reposition this from left hand to right hand side. Of course this works in landscape or portrait orientation. But multi-window mode, if you're not familiar with it, basically allows you to run two apps side by side. And they've made some enhancements here that make this even more powerful this time. So for example, if I want to launch Chrome, I just drag it here. And let's say I want to launch YouTube as well, or a Gmail app, or something like that. So you can see it takes up one part of the screen while the other takes up the other part of the screen. And you can resize it here using this little slider, automatically adjust the content to fit the uh, smaller screen. Works out pretty well. Now there are a few features here that are new this time. So if you tap the circle here, if you tap the left hand or right hand side, uh, you get the idea of what exactly is happening. So for example, this allows me to control everything on this window, 
my tab here controls everything on this window. So one of the new features here, which is kind of interesting, is um, sort of a, a multitasker for each window. So this allows you to manage more than one app in one screen. So let me demonstrate how this works. So if I tap this here, this allows me to see how many apps I have running on this side of the screen. Now right now I only have one. So let's go ahead and add some. So I'm going to bring up my multitasker and I'm going to drop in, let's say, the Gmail app. Drop it into this window so it replaces it. Let's do one more. Let's do the video app. All right, so now if I go to that multitasker, there you go. So you can see I have several apps running at the same time. So I can, in theory, jump between different apps while working on this side of the screen. And I can also do the same on this side of the screen. So for example, I see I only have a few here. I've already loaded some previously, so you get the idea here. So what appears here is different than what appears on this side. So it's kind of a nice way of multitasking on this tablet. Of course, you do have to realize it's here to begin with. Now you still have familiar controls such as swapping between the left hand and right hand side. Uh, you also have the ability to close one of the apps and you can use this feature to grab text or images from one window to drop it into another. This works particularly well with S Note. Now if you routinely like to have certain apps open side by side, you could set a recipe. So for example, I have YouTube and uh, the Chrome browser. If I go to this options icon down here, I can go and create a new recipe. So right now it's YouTube slash Chrome, which works for me. So now if I go to my multitasker, you can see I have YouTube slash Chrome. If I tap that, it launches both windows side by side. Now, of course, the big news with the Note series is the S Pen. So when you take the S Pen out of its silo, you get this Air Command utility, which pops up no matter where you are. Now, uh, this can be hidden just by tapping somewhere on the screen, and you can invoke it again just by tapping the button along the side while you hover the cursor over the screen. Now, we also have Air View here, so basically you don't have to interact with the screen directly. You can hover the tip of the pen over the screen, and it detects the presence of it. So we have Action Memo, we have Scrapbooker, Screen Write, S Finder, and Pen Window. Now, Action Memo is pretty interesting here. So if we bring up the action memo, it kind of brings up this sort of floating window. Uh, so again, no matter what you're doing, this will pop up and you can write a note down. So for example, if you want to write down a phone number. All right, so let's say we want to add this phone number to our address book. We hit this action icon up here. This gives us a few options here. So we can add it to our contacts, add it to email, we can search in our browser, we can look it up on a map, or we can add it to our task list. Now, obviously, this is a phone number, so the best course of option or course of action is to take it to our address book. So here we are in our address book, and you can see it's transcribed our number here, and you can see that that uh, little window here has minimized, and we can move it out of the way, and we can jump back to it when we're ready. So we can add our information and that sort of thing. So it actually works very well. I actually really like this feature on the Note 3. So if you want to reactivate that window, there you go and uh, you can also close it out of the way to get rid of it. Now another neat feature here is Scrapbooker. So it's kind of like an Evernote feature. In fact, it actually integrates with Evernote. So if we click the Scrapbook feature, this allows us to grab articles or videos or pictures or text, that sort of thing, from anywhere we are on the screen. So it can either be a, fi a photo from our photo gallery, a video from our video gallery, a YouTube video, or for example, this photo on this article. So all I have to do is circle it and it will add it to my scrapbook. Now that means I can continue browsing. If I find another article I want to add to my scrapbook, again, I bring up Scrapbooker. I don't want to see that every time. And circle it, and it will take me back to my scrapbook. And there we go. Now if I go to the scrapbook app, you'll see everything I've added to my scrapbook previously, including the two I just highlighted and two I've done previously. So thanks to my Samsung account or my Evernote account, everything is synced up. So no matter what device I'm using Scrapbooker on, all of that will appear. So that works pretty nicely. Now we also have something called ScreenWrite, which will take a screen grab of what we were just looking at, and this allows us to take notes on it. So for example, I can say, review this. And I probably need to change the color of my text here. So I can go up here to change that. So for example, if I want white, if I want to change the tip of my pen or my marker, I can change the width of it, that sort of thing. So there you go. Now we can also bring up S Finder. And we're familiar with this. I've demonstrated that previously. Basically, you can do your search to search the entire device for your calendar events, your videos, music, uh, emails, that sort of thing. Now lastly, we have Pen Window. And Pen Window basically allows you to open up windowed apps. So you just draw a box anywhere on the screen. And for example, if you want to bring up the calculator, it kind of brings up the calculator in the rough location of where you drew that. And you can move it around as well. You can also resize it here. You get a little arrow here to resize it. You can also maximize it or minimize it. So if you go to minimize it, 
kind of turns into this little circle here and stays out of the way. You can tap on it again to bring it up and you can also maximize it entirely. Now this is actually pretty nice for YouTube, so if you want to play a YouTube app anywhere on the screen, let's go to YouTube and let's play the latest TLD video. So you can move this around, you can open up a web browser and it'll stay on top or you can minimize it like that and it will pause your video and move it out of the way. Now if you hover the tip of your pen over a text input box like a URL bar, you can see you get this little indicator here which allows you to use handwriting recognition to input text. So for example, if I want to go to The Verge, all I have to do is write it in. It recognizes it, I can go to Go, and it will launch The Verge in my browser. Now the S-Note app has also been enhanced and this time it's now partnering with Evernote. So we can go to start here to select a template. So we're just going to select our subject here. Uh, we're going to go to our note. And you can see that we have several accounts which we can sync to. So we can sync to either our Samsung account, we can sync to our Evernote account, or set that up later. Uh, so if you have an Evernote account, you can now stay synced across your devices. Now with the S-Known app, you can select your pen tip type. So there we go, you can see what you can select here. You can also select the opacity. And you can also select the color as well. Uh, you can also select you know, whether you want to input via a keyboard as opposed to your pen. You have your eraser, you have your lasso here, your back and undo button, that sort of thing. Uh, you can also input uh, some other items such as voice memo, images, video, charts, illustrations, things from your clipboard, things from your scrapbook maps and idea sketch. So there's a lot of things you can do with the new S note. Uh, so for example, if I want to add text here, there you go. You can also see it's pressure sensitive. So the harder I push, the thinner or thicker the line. Now, if you look at the drop down shade, we can see some of the quick setting toggles, which reveal some of the features available on this tablet, many of which resemble the Note 3 and the GS4. So for example, we have our reading mode, blocking mode, which allows us to block notifications uh, or control notifications. And if you want to access any of these features, just tap and hold on them. It takes you right to that settings control panel. Uh, you also have power saving mode. Uh, power saving mode, if you tap, toggle that or press and hold that, it takes you to your power savings control. You have granular control over how you want this to behave, whether you want your CPU dialed back, your screen dialed back, uh, turn off haptic feedback, that sort of thing. And you can toggle that on and off up here as well. Uh, you also have multi-window mode, which you can toggle on and off. So if you don't want that to accidentally turn on, uh, you can basically turn that off. So if you tap and hold the back button, it no longer turns on. Uh, we also have screen mirroring mode, which basically allows you to mirror the screen directly onto your Samsung Smart TV or uh, one of the accessories that Samsung offers for you to enable that feature on your other TV. Uh, we also have AirView. So AirView, again, works with that uh, S Pen, for example, or your finger. Basically, you can hover the tip of your finger or the tip of your pen over anything on your screen uh, that has the AirView uh, feature uh, enabled. So, for example, if you're in your photo gallery, you just hover the S Pen over your photo gallery gallery and it expands it for you so you can see all the available photos in there. Uh, you can also, for example, see previews of your calendar, uh, calendar events without actually opening up the calendar event to see it. We also have Smart State technology. So this does have that camera looking at you at all the time, looks for your presence of your eyes and prevents the screen from going to sleep if it sees the presence of your eyes. Now we also have Smart Pause. Smart Pause works with video playback. So if you're watching a video, like a YouTube video, uh, it will pause the video playback if you're not looking at it. A lot of people do not like this because, of course, it doesn't work reliably and a lot of times it pauses the video when you don't want it to be paused so you can quickly toggle that on and off. We also have Smart Scroll, which allows you to navigate through a web page, for example, to uh, you know continue reading text. So you basically tilt down your eyes and it will scroll up and down for you. Now, as always, a lot can be revealed just by going to settings. So under settings, we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, data usage, location services, and more networks. So we can set up our VPNs. We have nearby devices for DLNA equipment. So if you go to that, you can see all of your available options. And we have screen mirroring. So we can mirror the screen of this device to equipment that can use it. We have our device uh, control. So we have sound here. And this is where probably a lot of people want to jump right to the settings because in order to turn off some of those annoying sounds, this is how you do it. So for example, that blooping touch sound that you keep getting for everything you interact with, uh, you can toggle that on and off right here. You also have that screen lock sound you can turn off, haptic keyback or haptic uh, feedback as well as key tap sounds, all of that can be controlled here. You also have audio output uh, because we do have dual stereo speakers here, you have the option to do stereo or processed surround sound, so like a simulated surround sound. 
We also have our display settings, so we have lots of options here, including timeout, screen mode, uh, reading mode, you can toggle that on and off, daydream mode, which is a sort of active screensaver that appears when you're charging the device, show battery percentage, which is turned off by default. You also have your touch key light duration, so that's when these light up. So you have 1.5 seconds before they dim off, but of course you can also change that here. Multi-window mode, you can toggle on and off. You also have your lock screen controls here. So there are a lot of options that are off by default that I actually find useful. So for example, shortcuts. Uh, shortcuts allows you to change what appears on your lock screen. So for example, uh, these are the ones that come by default, but if I want to add Chrome here, I do have to remove one of them. So I can delete that and I can go to add and it allows me to grab Chrome. And there you go. And I can also reposition it if I prefer. Now I can also enable that wake up and lock screen command. So for example, I can say hi galaxy to unlock the device. Now something the Note 3 has, which the Note 10.1 doesn't have is the ability to wake it up while it's locked. So for example, I can say, hi galaxy, what's the weather like tomorrow? Here is the weather for Auburn Hills, Michigan. Now with the Note 10.1, I would have to get to the lock screen and say, Hi Galaxy. There you go. Now under wallpaper, we have a new lock screen option. We can go to travel wallpapers, which works with TripAdvisor. You can change the interval of the refresh of those wallpapers. So you can do it every three hours or up to 24 hours. Uh, so we're good with three hours. And basically if you enable this and we go to our lock screen now, you'll see these travel themed wallpapers. So you can see the location and that sort of thing. You can see the TripAdvisor logo in the upper right corner. Now perhaps the most interesting panel here is controls. This is where you can change your language and input settings. You can change whether you want to use Google voice typing or the Samsung keyboard. Change your language, voice recognizer. So if you want to use Google or Samsung by Vlingo, you could do that. Voice search, text to speech options, that sort of thing. We also have uh, voice controls. So you can enable certain voice controls such as alarm. So you can stop or snooze an alarm with your voice command such as stop or snooze. Same with the camera, you can say shoot, cheese, or smile. Uh, music, you can control the music player uh, just by saying next, previous, play, pause, volume up and down, that sort of thing. We also have our S Pen options. So we can turn off pen detection. So if you have the pen detached, it's always looking for the presence of the pen. So if you walk away from the pen with your tablet, it will give you a notification or an alarm. You also have your pointer. So if you, let's bring out our S Pen here. So if you go to your pointer here or bring out your S Pen, you can see you get a little pointer here uh, just above the tip of the pen. Uh, you can turn that on and off. So if you prefer that not to be available, you also have direct pen input. That's the option to hover your cursor or your pen over a text input box to bring up that text, a handwritten text input option. Now under motion control, we have a few things we can demonstrate here. So for example, if you're in the photo gallery and you have an image you want to zoom in and out on, basically you just hold your two fingers here on the image and pitch the device up and down. Uh, it's not terribly useful. Of course, you can do the same thing with a pinch to zoom gesture. Now you can also move an icon. So if you want to manage your icons on your home screen, this is something you can do here. Uh, basically, if you grab your icon, hold me, and you can pitch left and right to change the position or which home screen you're on. So in fact, let's go to the home screen and demonstrate that. So if we go to the home screen, tap and hold one of these icons and move the device left or right, we can select the home screen we want to drop it on. Now something a little more useful is palm motion. So for example, we can do a screen grab just by wiping the edge of our palm on the screen. So like this. There you go, you hear that little click. Uh, we also have mute and pause. So if you want to mute or pause the sound, you can cover the screen with your hand. So if we go ahead and try it, there you go. Now we also have our smart screen features, which include things like smart stay, smart pause, and smart scroll, which are all features that work with the front firing camera to monitor the orientation and presence of your eyes. Now smart rotation also works to prevent the device from going into landscape orientation when you lay on your side while reading text, such as a book or reading a website. So it's able to determine the presence of your eyes. Uh, so if you lay on your side while reading something in one orientation, it won't change it to the other orientation based solely on the accelerometer or uh, uh, gyroscope. Now just to demonstrate the keyboard here, you can see we have our voice keyboard. This is a test of the voice keyboard period. I can also get back to my full size keyboard and if I tap and hold this, I can get to more options here including my handwriting keyboard. So I can do a test here. So it works pretty well including uh, punctuation and everything like that. And you can see we have a revised interface for this entire system. Now in addition to the stylus, I could also use my finger as the input option.
Now we also have our settings here, so this takes us to our input settings options, and we have predictive text, auto replacement, auto capitalization, auto spacing, auto punctuate. We have swift key flow, which allows you to type a word by swiping between letters. That is on by default. So for example, let's get back to our keyboard here. Let's bring it up. Uh, so for example, we can do hello, and it predicts it automatically. This is a test. Now we also have several keyboard options here. So we have our full QWERTY keyboard, which fills up the screen, uh, whether you're in portrait or landscape orientation. We also have our floating keyboard, which we can move around uh, depending on what we prefer. Now we also have our split keyboard here, which I find particularly useful on a tablet. So if you want to use the tablet in landscape orientation, uh, this is really the only way to interact with the keyboard with your thumbs. Otherwise, it's a little too far to type across the full-size keyboard. You can also move it around up and down depending on what you prefer. Now the camera app is really full featured, again resembling the Note 3 with a few features that are missing, but most of them are here. So for example, we can take a photo by tap to focus, take the photo, we can record video, we can take a photo while recording video, we can pause it, resume recording, and stop it. We also have our filters up here. So if we bring up our filters, we have lots of filters to pick from if you prefer. And we also have these modes. So there are lots of modes. We have auto mode, beauty face with a description of exactly what each mode does. Now we also have dual shot mode. Now dual shot mode records both cameras at the same time. We're familiar with this from the GS4 and the Note 3. So you get a little postage stamp or postage size uh, version of you and you can scale it up and down to a certain size and you can change the border around here so you can do the oval blur or instant pick. Now what you're not seeing here, what you get with the Note 3 is that glue effect basically allows you to stick your image or your recording live onto a fixed subject like a billboard. So it kind of fills up the billboard. It's kind of a neat effect but it's not available here. Now we also have our voice control here so we can do things like smile, cheese, shoot, Record video. Now if we look at our Geekbench scores, we score about 957 on the single score test versus 2500 on the multi-core test. This is pretty similar to the Note 3, which scored a little bit better here. So I think this has, thanks largely to the fact that this is pushing more pixels than the Note 3. Now this is much better than something like the iPad 4, which is about to be obsolete. So this is uh, 778 versus 1418. So a big jump there in terms of processing performance. Now this is also a big jump from the score from the Nexus 10. So you can see here, especially on the multi-core test, 1126 versus 2500. So it definitely gains there. Now in terms of overall performance, I think the high resolution display definitely hampers its overall smoothness. Now compared to the Note 3, which has similar specs, this is definitely isn't as quick. Now the best way to point this out is when you rotate this from landscape to portrait mode. So for example, if we're going to portrait mode here, it takes quite a bit of time to re-render. So you can see this on the website. You can also see this on the home screen. So let's go ahead and do this here. Now overall you can see that there isn't quite the smoothness in terms of those animations and transitions as you see with the Note 3. Uh, so there's definitely some performance issues with the uh, Note 10.1 for 2014 and I think it has a lot to do with the high resolution display which looks beautiful but it's definitely pushing more pixels than something like the Note 3. Now for me, my favorite feature of the Note 10.1 is this sharp high resolution display, a huge improvement over last year. Last year's model only had a resolution of 800 by 1280, good for a pretty measly 149 pixels per inch. Now the Retina iPad has a pixel density of 264, while this has a screen resolution of 2560 by 1600, good for 299 pixels per inch. So that's even better than the Retina iPad and it's pretty much the same panel in the Nexus 10. So so it creates a really sharp uh, display, uh, beautiful colors, nice contrast, even backlighting. Samsung has done a very nice job here. Now because we have such a high resolution display, text looks really sharp on this display, even when zoomed all the way out. So I have the full The Verge website here, and you can see text is crisp. So this makes it an excellent e-reader. So for people who want an e-reader with sharp displays, this is definitely one of them to look at. Now the audio is a big story here because we have these stereo speakers on either side of the device, and they're sort of positioned up here so you don't accidentally block them. Definitely one of the better sounding tablets you can get right now, and even though they're no longer front firing, they still sound excellent. I really have no complaints here.
So in conclusion, I'm definitely a big fan of the Note 10.1 besides its performance issues. I do love the display. I love the design. Very simple, elegant design. It's a little more angular. They've trimmed down the edges and we have excellent audio quality thanks to those stereo speakers. Uh, pretty similar to last year. We have that beautiful display, very sharp. We finally see one of the best displays on the market. Make it to Samsung's high-end tablet. Samsung certainly offers a lot of features and if you're used to Samsung TouchWiz on your phone, you're definitely going to enjoy having it on your tablet. And of course, if you're already invested in the Samsung ecosystem, you definitely want a tablet that also carries a lot of those features. Now, in addition, we have excellent audio quality thanks to these stereo speakers, and we have that IR blaster for controlling our AV equipment. And otherwise, the design and construction are pretty nice. I think my biggest concern here is the fact that when you hold the tablet, particularly in portrait orientation, it's pretty easy to accidentally touch these off-screen controls. So, for example, if you're reading the book and accidentally hit the uh, back button that takes you right out of it. So to me, that's a constant nuisance. Really, it's only meant to be used in this orientation. I would actually prefer if they move these buttons back to the screen uh, and away from the bezel. Uh, we've seen this with the Tab 3 as well. Definitely not my preference here. Now, if you're like me, I'm still a big fan of the Note series, even though I rarely use the stylus. It kind of hides away nicely, and if you want to use it, at least it's there. Uh, and of course, if you have a need for the stylus, of course, there are no other tablets that really compare. So this is definitely the one to get if you're interested in the stylus features. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one. Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the front firing camera of the Note 10.1 for 2014. Again, this is a 2 megapixel sensor capable of recording video at 1080p at 30 frames per second. So this gives you an idea of the audio quality as well as the uh, video quality for recording vlogs or Skype or that sort of thing. Zoe. Hey Zoe. Chloe. Hey Zoe. Zoe, look at me. Zoe, you gonna look at me? There's the Zoe face. Hey. Hey Chloe. I always have your attention, don't I? Yes, I do.